In this tutorial, we're going to wrap up our exploration of controllers and sense repercussion with the types we have not looked at yet, speed and external. If you're interested in following along with the same project file I'm using, I've made this sense repercussion file available on my Patreon. Check out the link in the description of this video to grab those and follow along hands-on. Becoming a patron, you'll receive files for every tutorial I have planned in this series. It sort of feels like we've covered a lot of ground already, but there's so much more to come. I've divided this tutorial into three sections. The time marker for each section is in the description of this video if you're interested in one part more than others. Okay, let's dive straight into this. To understand how speed controllers work, I came up with this simple example. Here's a metronome for you on the rim. Play a backbeat with this metronome. This speed controller is modulating reverb mix. Nothing is happening, it's totally dry. Now play eighth notes. A tiny bit of reverb is introduced. As you play faster subdivisions, you'll find new reverb settings. Let's try another example where we utilize buzzes. One really cool thing about the speed controller is that it has a fast attack and slow release time. It updates really quickly when speeding up. When I do a buzz stroke, it flies up to the maximum virtually instantly. However, it takes its time when slowing back down. In this example, we can bump up the pitch of the piano really fast and play all the notes as the controller goes down. The feel of this has everything to do with the sensitivity controls here. In this case, it's not going to do anything unless I do a buzz. So as the pitch is coming down, I can play something moderately paced without it shooting back up. One cool thing to do with buzzes and speed controllers is map them to Sunhouse mods. This makes for some extreme sounds that serve as great fills. Let's wrap up the speed controller section with a pretty intuitive example. Notice that I put this speed controller on the whole kit as opposed to just one drum. The intent is that whenever I play busier, the sound gets a little more aggressive. Now let's take a look at external controllers, starting out with LFOs. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. As far as that applies to sensory percussion, just think of an LFO as a modulation source that moves on its own and does so relatively slowly. We have several classic waveform shapes available. That determines how the modulation source moves. Let's strap this onto the pitch of a looping sample just to get a sense of what these shapes translate to in sound. LFOs are incredibly useful in less extreme applications, although I do love mapping LFOs to pitch myself. Let's try using an LFO to modulate the length parameter on a sampler. This sample is now alive and changing over the course of time autonomously. We can hear the changes as we play. One advantage we get when using LFOs is that we still have all of our other controllers at our disposal. Try enabling this velocity controller to mix in chorus and this timbre controller to control sample select for a few different pitch options. Using LFOs is a great way to quickly expand your palette of sounds without making or finding new samples. Let's say you want to play a filler sound on your rim, and you don't want it to be repetitive. Here's my filler sound. Classic sound designer's whoosh. Enable this LFO to slowly modulate pitch. Enable this second LFO, which is randomly modulating the delay time. <laughs> 
Now I'm gonna get drastically different sounds every time I hit the rim, and I'm still just using the one sample. LFOs do not have to be used for continuous controls. Let's use one for button control to do some automated navigation of samples. On this sampler, I have samples of piano notes outlining a chord across several octaves. This square LFO is mapped to sample advance, meaning that every time the LFO oscillates, it advances the sample. This is not that different than using the saw down shaped LFO on sample select, a continuous modulation. The reason I wanted to use this LFO in button style is so that I'm free to reset the sample selection at will, and the LFO will just keep advancing from there. I set this up so that a hard velocity resets the sample selection back to one, and from there you can play softer up the scale as the LFO advances for you. For this final section in the tutorial, we're going to be utilizing MIDI from outside sensory percussion. One very utilitarian use for external MIDI would be to trigger zones you aren't utilizing with the sensors. In this example, I'm using a few MIDI notes from my Octopad to play looping samples loaded onto the rim, shoulder, hardware, and shell zones on the bass drum channel. You can use any device that sends MIDI note messages to do this. I'm using MIDI notes 60, 62, and 64. It's very handy to have this option. The ability to bridge to other controllers opens up a lot of possibilities with sensory percussion. We can also use MIDI notes to momentarily open up samplers to receiving triggers. I have 12 samplers here, each one with one of the 12 notes in an octave. Each sampler's receiving trigger status is controlled by the corresponding MIDI note. Use a MIDI keyboard to hold down the keys of what notes you want in your chord and then play the drum to play the chord. And now the black hole is starting to open up. Now we're going to take this MIDI input feature to a new level. I may be out on a fringe a bit with these last examples, but I think it's important to understand the scope of what's possible, even if you don't end up incorporating this into your workflow all the time. If you have the files to follow along, you'll find an Ableton Live Session file with clips containing MIDI for the remaining examples in this tutorial. If you're not an Ableton user, I also included regular MIDI files for use in the DAW of your choice. I will say that in my experience, Ableton Live is by far the most MIDI friendly, but you should be able to do most everything I'm doing in any DAW. Make sure you have an IAC bus set up on your computer and enabled in Sensory Percussion and your DAW. If you have never set that up before, I included a helpful link in the description below. Essentially, an IAC bus is a virtual MIDI cable you can use to send MIDI between different programs on your computer, such as Ableton Live and Sensory Percussion. It's not as scary as it sounds. Once it's set up, you probably won't have to think about it ever again. Let's use a MIDI CC from our DAW to act as an LFO. A huge advantage of using MIDI coming from a DAW is that it can be synced to a metronome. In this case, I just drew a sawtooth shape over the span of one measure. In sensory percussion, we can have that mapped to sampler pitch, creating a cascading vibraphone dreamscape that resets every four beats. We can also use external MIDI to sequence which samples we want to use when. This example has a bass line of pitched kicks in the sampler. Over in Ableton, I have a clip with notes to tell sensory percussion to switch samples. C sharp 1 is mapped to the sample advance button. C1 is mapped to the sample reset button. This way, the clip cycles through the samples one per measure as long as the clip is looping.
I included the reset as a safety in case you wanted to reset the clip out of phase. Note that I have these MIDI notes set slightly before the downbeats. This is so that the sampler has a moment to switch so I can hit right on the downbeat with the right sample already selected. Alternatively, you can use a CC to do the switching and map it to the sample select box. The main advantage to this approach is that you can achieve some pretty complex sample navigation, although it does require a lot of mouse clicks. For this final example, I went to town a little bit with this idea of using external MIDI to sequence events and sensory percussion. Think of it as composing a dynamic container for your drumming to fit into. I think this is a game-changing approach to music creation with sensory percussion. Thanks for watching this tutorial, stay tuned for more to come.